Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of Stalls TV. I'm Bob Robinson. Today we're talking about 15 ways to grow your business with a vinyl cutter, using a vinyl cutter. Uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff to go through as far as uh, all si sorts of samples and items that you can add to your shop to help increase your business. We're going to talk about uh, the cutters, how they work, maybe, depending on uh, the answers to the polls which are coming up. So before we go much further, I do want to throw this out as I always do. Um, if you have questions, feel free to chat those in on your chat box or uh, live on Facebook. And uh, our ever capable and legendary producer, Jimmy Palmer, will facilitate that for you. Speaking of which, I'm going to have him get started into the, the couple poll questions that I've, uh, we've put together so we can understand who you are a little better so we know kind of how to gauge this program. So first question. All right, very good. So. I don't think that I have to spend a whole lot of time talking about the vinyl cutter and how it operates and what the process is. But for you 14% out there who may not have a vinyl cutter but are still watching, very, very briefly, very basic, because I don't want you to miss out on this. The rest of you can re review this and maybe even be surprised at some of the information. <laughs> this vinyl cutter is simply uh, this. It is a device that will, instead of printing, it's actually cutting using a little drag knife technology. Heat transfer vinyl like this is two ply, so we would start with our design in the computer and we would mirror the design. We'd mirror the image, flip it backwards because we're cutting from the back side of the, of the, uh, of the uh, material. And as you can see, I'm just peeling just the outside of this. The, the colored side is attached to this carrier sheet that you see here at the clear. So we're going to go ahead and do this real quickly, hopefully quickly. I usually have people for this. I'm not a weeder. And if cut properly, you're cut through the colored material to and just kissing against the carrier. So you're cutting, setting your force just enough to cut through the, uh, the, the heat transfer vinyl itself and leaving the carrier intact. And then once you flip it over, then you have a uh, a properly printed uh, design as far as, uh, or cut design, if you will. Get this out of here. There we go. We're going to be talking a lot about a lot of different types of finishes, a lot of different types of material. The material that I'm using here is fashion film. My eyes are horrible, so if I screw this up, you'll just have to say, these eyes are horrible. What I like about the thinner materials is it allows you to cut fine detail. And that's what we've kind of got with what we've got here, which sometimes it's hard to see the uh, actual cut lines, but we're getting it. And there should be another one in here someplace. Let's go with that. There should be. Okay, when it's all said and done, you can see here. I may get a zoom in on that. There we go. I'll get off the glare. But you have a, a full color design, single color image with nice detail that's going to replicate screen print. So in screen printing, you know, there's only a few of you who actually do screen printing, but screen printing is kind of like the norm in the industry, what kind of the standard, what people are um, kind of compare everything against. So we want our designs uh, to look as much like uh, screen print as possible because that's what the norm is, what people want for their, for their, for their shirts. So why a vinyl cutter? Uh, real quickly, it's a very small investment. You know, people have just found that they can make a big business out of just having a vinyl cutter and heat press. That can be your entire business. And based on the polls that we have, a lot of you are doing that now, so you understand that entirely. Uh, but it's not just the low investment. It's the quick return on your investment. It's the, abil yeah, the ability to do uh, quick turn personalization, customization. Screen printers, they have to have volume to make that affordable. Here it's the same cost to do two as it is to do 200, uh, especially when you're talking single color design. So we try to stay in single color images as much as possible with a vinyl cutter, just because if you add a second color, you are truly doubling your cost for each layer and or tripling if you go that way. So your cost of material and labor is the same, um, is, is, is doubled for each layer, or, you know, for each layer it's the same. Um, so there's a great value. Uh, the durability is exceptional. It actually outlasts screen printing. There's no cracking and fading and, and uh, um, uh, fading. 
Um, being able to react quickly to your customers' needs in a quick turn type of module, somebody comes in, got to have it now. These are, these are important uh, uh, things to be able to do for your customers. Uh, also, price options. So if you're an embroiderer, for example, and you've got a very, very large back design and they want this, you know, they want this thing on the back of a jacket, it could be 100,000 stitches. And that's on your machine for a long time and the cost on that is pretty excessive. You could offer them a price point and say, you know what, why don't we just do that in heat transfer vinyl using the vinyl cutter. And now we can uh, duplicate that same image uh, and for a fraction of the cost. Maybe you make it up and make uh, more of the profit yourself or pass along a lot of it to your customers well just to keep their business. And then lastly, but not lastly, but yeah, I'm sure we'll talk a lot about more, but one other thing is the um, special effects. A lot of the finishes that you can get out of heat transfer vinyl with the, uh, with the glitter. You know, we talked about duplicating screen print for the most part for your day-to-day -day type of stuff. However, um, glitter material, uh, reflective, flock, um, hologram, glow in the dark, a lot of things you just can't get out of ink or thread are very, very possible using the, uh, the vinyl cutter. So don't want to spend too much time talking about all that because most of you know all that stuff. I want to get into the business of applying a lot of the different uh, uh, samples and SKUs and things that we have here. We promised you 15 ways. Uh, I hope no one's keeping count because I haven't been, but there's a lot going on here today. We're going to uh, start off with, I mean, the very, very first thing is going to be, if I can get my head up there, here we are. This is a t-shirt. It's a basic t-shirt. I'm not even going to decorate it because you're all doing these. T-shirts are, it's what makes the world go round. There's, I forget how many billions of these sold uh, annually, decorated shirts. But what I will say is when you're picking out a t-shirt, sometimes, you know, the cost is, is the issue. That's why they your customers chose a t-shirt but also offer some upscale. This is a, and we'll be talking a lot about the brands and who's provided what here, but this is a Bella, a Bella Canvas, uh, really nice soft hand ring spun tee. So have that available. There's something that's a little more fashion forward. So using your vinyl cutter, but sometimes it's just about the blank. Sometimes it's just what am I going to uh, apply to? And giving them the option of, of the, something that's more retail and, um, you know, something that's just that's not quite the same promotional type of tea that you'd get for uh, just uh, attending an event. When you think vinyl cutter, one of the very first things comes to mind is sports, sports uniforms. And I'm not even going to apply this one because I did this one uh, oh, quite a while ago. But this is a, a, an example of a full-blown football jersey, front number, Team name up small, all done in a, uh, a silver material to match to match this jersey. Back personalized with number. Oh, what a shameful plug! Uh, Robinson 33. Even even shoulder and sleeve numbers on top. So you're able to do f on field and fan wear. Speaking of fan wear, so that's that's one good example. And it's not just football, of course. You've got all the sports that require. Uh, personalization and they're all personalized. The only thing that's not common to everyone else is this little word right here on the front end, this little Titans logo. Everything else, every kid has a different, every player has a different number and obviously a different name. Which is why vinyl cutters are in business today. Now to go with that, you're talking fanware. Um, now this is extra. This is a kind of a scaled down version. I'd say this would be like a ladies fan wear type of deal. My kid's on the field and I want to wear his number and his name proudly because everybody was because I'm representing. And so we'll go ahead and do a quick press on this one. Going to head over to, let's see, there's that and there's that. Go ahead over to the machine. Machine we're using today is the uh, Hotronics Fusion. It's kind of our favorite, kind of our mainstay. It's obviously your favorite as well because it's our best seller. We like it for a lot of different reasons. I'm not going to go too detailed into all the features, but the threadability and uh, the uh, digital display on the front end and the interchangeable lower platens are really, really big, big reasons. Now, I've got, this came from Boxercraft. Still got the tag on it. I'll be careful not to melt that to it. Uh, but, in fact, we'll get rid of that now. We thank the good folks at Boxercraft for uh, helping us with that. 
going to put this on the back because what I have is a name number and it's actually in a white glitter flake. And we're threading on. Now we do have, and we always talk about pressure and this center, this seam right here could be an issue if it were more pronounced, but it's not such a big deal. So we'll probably uh, live with that and press over top of it. Now my design here looks like it was cut a little bit tight because I really want this name to be centered up, you know, a little centered in between the yoke and the neck here a little bit higher. Uh, certain size jersey, you just never know. So it was a good stab, but I'm just going to go ahead and cut, the, cut it apart so I can raise it up just a little bit. And once you have the jersey and you know you can pre-measure so you know when you're doing your layout of the, of, the, uh, of the design how much space you really want between each one. So I'm going to get this up here a little bit higher. Hopefully we get it as straight as possible. And usually about an inch down from, the, from this, this seam here for the top of the number. But since this is a fan jersey, things are kind of scaled you know, a little bit differently than what it would be for an actual on-field type of deal. No need for a cover sheet with this because my carrier is kind of the, its own cover sheet. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad habit to get into, but using a cover sheet. And that's just in case you've got something on the uh, material itself that could transfer to your heat press. And this, of course, is a hot peel. Loving it. End result. Oh, he's good, you. Now, we're representing uh, not only the team, but my boy's number. And I'm sitting in the fans, loving this, loving this. And so this is a nice add-on. Another way to grow your business, not just the players. Go after the fan wear. There's actually a lot more fans than there are kids on the field. So it's a good... Uh, it's a good idea to, to target that market, target those people that are, uh, that are actually watching the, uh, watching the game themselves. So fanware, a lot, of different, a lot of different avenues there. We can go into a lot more, um, and I'm sure you're all, some of you are pretty much aware of all the added things with spirit towels and all the other paraphernalia and seat cushions, umbrellas, all those type of things that will promote your team especially with schools. Schools is a huge, huge market. You could just sell just to schools, and if you were kind of the preferred vendor for them, you could make a living just supporting one school with all the different uh, activities uh, that are out there. And that's just like the school I graduated from that had like maybe 50 kids in it. Now, Bob, we do have one question on Facebook. What do um, we got there? I already know the answer to this question but oh, but well, then why not just show off because dan wants to know what vinyl cutter you would recommend Ooh, which vinyl cutter i would recommend right now we've got two uh, that are very very comparable that uh, the same basic specifications 24 inch digital servo motor vinyl cutters uh, and that's the graph tech ce6000 and the roland gs24 you're talking personally, and you did direct it to me, so I'm allowed to say this because I do have, a, I'm nothing if not opinionated. I am a, a Roland fan when it comes to um, you know, brand, brand loyalty. I like the Roland for a couple reasons. One, simplicity. I think it's a little bit easier to catch on the learning curves, a little easier. Uh, I also like the Roland because of the durability. The Roland actually comes with a three year warranty as opposed to a two year with most. Uh, which kind of speaks to the durability and the reliability of that cutter. And also, uh, I've just seen, I've had a bigger track record with Roland, so I've seen how many we've sold and how few have come back and needed actually repaired or, or had problems with. So that's my favorite, but if you said, I'm going Graph Tech, I don't care what you say, I'd say, good choice. It's really not a bad cutter. Uh, so do do like both both versions. So now the only one other thing I will throw out there is if you are using a Mac, then it's Graph Tech because Roland does not support the Mac. Good enough. Any other questions before we move on? Appreciate the questions though. Love it. It kind of lets me know that you didn't fall asleep at the uh, at the mouse there. Okay. Uh, so we looked at uniforms. We looked at fanware, and we're going to keep bouncing around. So if something seems to be out of out of uh, you know out of order. Yeah. So this, that's the way business is too. They come in. You take them as they come. We're looking at now um, a simple polo shirt. And, you know, it's not always just the, you know, simple polo shirt. This is just a little bit of a step up. This is Port Authority. 
There's a little hint of a, uh, uh, looks like a reflective type of just trim here, as you can see that kind of yeah, shining there up on the edges. So we've done a, a silver design to kind of match that, to go with this, to set this off. We're using it, this is more of a uh, resort type of uh, wear. This is the Rolling Hills uh, Country Club that we're going to be applying this to. So don't think that every higher end polo needs to be embroidered, although embroidery still is the perceived high end type of, um, of embellishment, especially on, on polos like this. When you get into some of these performance wear type like this one is, you can, can be very dicey when it comes to uh, putting the, uh, getting the embroidery to it. They tend to pucker, you gotta, you're, you gotta use a very, very heavy stabilizer underneath to keep things from pulling. Sometimes you bury stitches down to the little micro mesh. There's a lot of drawbacks into embroidering something like this. Actually, the preferred method on a performance is heat transfer, and a lot of the bigger players in the industry are doing this very, this very process. So you want something that's gonna match the fabric itself, and this heat transfer film, uh, especially the type that gives you good stretch and rebound, is a, is a great way to go. So let's do that. I'm gonna, definitely gonna get rid of this hanger. My first time button is always tricky. Usually I have to call my mom for this part. There we go. Now, because we've got buttons on this placket in the center and collars and all kinds of weirdness going on here, I'm probably not going to thread this over the 16 by 20. I'm going to fall back on an optional platen. And I think the six, six by 10 will be just fine for this. We'll come back to that one, I'm sure. And a six by 10, this direction, just fine. Now, when I change platens like this, I know this isn't a heat press seminar, but my pressure now is horrible because I went from a 16 by 20 to a six by 10. So I need to crank down my pressure significantly until I get at least the feel that I want. And then we'll check the actual digital readout once the shirt is in there. All right, pretty happy with that. We'll go ahead and thread the, uh, the polo shirt on. Actually, really liking this shirt. But they never order my size, so I'll never get to wear it. Also, when you're going upside down like this, make sure that you're doing left chest and not right chest. I've done it before. Even a skilled professional like myself has had that issue. The other big thing when it comes to applying a design to a left chest, especially when you don't see the whole shirt like this, getting, where do I put it? Normally, we want to take the, uh, where the collar hits the shoulder seam and center my design on that, roughly speaking. And height down from here to the center of the design, depending on the shape and size of the design, you sometimes go anywhere from six to nine inches, depending on the size of the shirt. But if you have to cheat one way or the other, my opinion, which is all that matters, is higher is better than lower. Be careful not to get an underarm design on a left chest. So looking at it this way, you think, wow, that's really tight to that placket. But when you take it off, you go, oh, it's about right. So let's go with that. Again, I have no need to cover anything. I've got everything out of the way, the buttons, the seams. So it's going to layer straight down. With performance fabric like this, uh, it you'll find it necessary in a lot of cases to uh, get an edge here to use a material that goes at a low temperature. Because we have so many designs to press here, we're kind of cheating a little bit, and using a one temperature fits all. And a lot of them are very very okay are okay as far as applying the image, but sometimes you can get a scorch factor on some performance wear. So. In real life application, I would take this down to the lowest temp that I could, use a, uh, the Premium Plus, go down to like 280 degrees and apply it uh, that way to avoid that square box that you can sometimes get around here. We're, we did pretty well here. The only thing I have here is just a slight impression from the platen and that just that shakes out. It's not a really scorch mark. 
So loving that. That's a that's a good look. Let me give you a little bit better better look of it. If I can get the big old nasty collar out of there. There we go. So good luck for corporate wear. Uh, again, doesn't have to be embroidered to be a high end. We're back to some of the, um, I want to say sports type of sports related. Now this isn't necessarily a, an actual sports jersey and on field, but it is, ooh, love this jersey, um, something like a coach would wear or something you would wear uh, as a, as a, just to represent the, the team off the field, traveling from game to game. Uh, this is from J America, very popular as far as Heather. Uh, it's a Heather fleeced type of performance. Get rid of this. And what we're applying to this one is actually two color, and it's already assembled here, but I won't put them in one piece. Uh, we've got just basically coach with the letter A, and there's a, there's a two color design. So we'll press the lower silver down first. This is the, the uh, Fashion Film Electric Silver. It's got a little bit of a metal plate type of look to it. And then the, the red A is, is electric as well, but it's just a red, red gloss. And it's going to show up really nicely on this, on this red heather. Utilize, I mean, kind of picked this one because I'm going to use the same platen. That's the way I stationed them that way anyway. I'm going to thread on the same way. Now you'll notice. Well, you will see here shortly. I'm going to zip this up so we keep integrity of the uh, shirt intact. Those are big words. I learned them today. But you'll notice because it's a thicker, much thicker than that, than that very thin polo, I'm going to do a test on it before I even get the design down there to see what my pressure is. And I can already feel this a little bit more than what I'd like to have. So I'm going to back her down a little bit, lock it down. And I'm pretty comfortable with that. Same rules apply as far as left chest go. It is a smaller logo, so a little higher would even be even more uh, appropriate. But again, lining up this, this, the, where the collar hits the shoulder as far as left to right. And this is further away from the placket than the other design, but because it's a smaller design, it's only like two inches wide. So I'm going to get this little red guy off here because we're going to add him here in a second. Now one other thing that I like, and this is going to help you when you're doing two color designs, is pick a material that is a hot peel that you can just tack and then press the second time. So this is just going to get like a couple seconds. And I should be able to peel this off right away. Now it's not there for keeps, but it allowed me to speed things up so I can apply this center color A. Now I will use a, a, a cover sheet because now I've taken the carrier sheet away from the, from the, uh, the rest of it. That's a big help when you're, um, when you can have like sometimes the mylar will cover an area of this, this, this had a bigger cover area here. Now I'm not going to, I'll probably just tack this one too and then release it because sometimes that little carrier will put an impression in the lower design if you don't have it cut bigger. But rather than waste the material, we'll just tack it. I can find it. Peel it. And now we're going to mean business and cover it and press it for the full, full dwell time. So you guys got this, I take it, because I have no questions coming in. or not ones that at least need to be answered on air. That's a good thing. There you go. Very, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a cool look overall, very soft, very, it blends in with this, this, this performance type of material. And uh, again, very striking, sometimes just, you know, very basic, subtle images are preferred. You don't have to be big to c get someone's attention or at least to, to, to be classy enough to appeal to your, to your client base. All right, moving on. Sometimes it's just a simple sweatshirt. Now this is a, a zipper version. I've already got my design prepped and ready to go here so I can keep track of them. 
just using a simple again we're still back into kind of the the team sports the uh, the fan wear this is the this is what we travel in this is what our baseball team is wearing in the fall league because we've got to, we need a little bit of a hoodie we're going to throw this uh, this baseball design on the left chest same thing applies we'll just kind of shoot through this one a little bit quicker because it's the same type but it's more about you know what what the, what the product we're offering what is the actual uh, material the skew the uh, the the garment itself this is from Port and Company it's a ring spun not just your basic uh, wide uh, wider weave, bulkier. It's cool. People like it. It's kind of what uh, what the kids want to wear, or the players or adults want to wear when they shop for themselves, not necessarily something that uh, their school provided for them. Because it's a very similar uh, fabric thickness, I'm going to trust that my pressure is pretty good shape. Lining up, going left chest. It doesn't have to be left chest. This could be put on the back of a hood. And that's one thing that can help increase your sales is add on, add on additional uh, locations. It doesn't have to be left chest anymore. I mean, that hasn't been had to be left chest anymore for quite some time, but the more places that you can apply an image on, you're just increasing your, um, your total sale because you're, you're picking up more embellishments. Everybody loves white on dark. It's a good look. Still, you know, especially when something's cut with this kind of fine of detail and not a whole lot of, uh, not a whole lot of uh, vinyl there, heat transfer film, that you don't feel that it's here at all. It's, it gives you an impression that it's ink and it's, again, a lot more durable than it would be had we uh, screen printed it. Now, don't get me wrong, if you've got 200 of those to do, get it screen printed or get a screen, better yet, get a screen printed transfer and get all 200 done with it. It's much more cost effective. We're not saying the vinyl cut everything you have, but what vinyl cutting does, it fills in the blanks where uh, screen print leaves off, where they can't do the shorter runs and the personalization, at least cost effectively. It also um, gives, again, gives you options that embroiderers can't, can't handle on different fabrics, different substrates, different effects. We're going to get into some of those once we get into some of these uh, non-wearable type of designs. Here's uh, something I don't want to get into yet. Okay. Here's something that I've already done. Um, wow, that really does show up. Reflective. It's perfect for... Um, now this happens to be set up for Sam's construction visibility, high visibility, whether it be municipalities, whether it be for um, just like this guy's working on a, a, a road crew where he's actually in construction and he needs high vis. Anything that safety wear is important, whether it be runners, whether it be just protecting your kids because they're out at night. Uh, reflective is showing up on so many things. It's not just this industrial quality type of stuff, which is great, um, but it's also in fashion now. Uh, I've got um, how many, and I'm not very trendy, trust me. But I've uh, I've got a lot of different uh, performance wear type of shirts that have just a little hint of reflective on the weather on the back because people are assuming that I'm really we're running. Yeah, go figure. I'm running with no one chasing me even. Uh, but but we've matched. You know, this was pre that was pre applied. This this um, banding was already there, but this image here and the personalization here was added, and you can't tell the difference as you're getting the good reflection off the, off the lighting in here. So using just reflective material on, people make a living on this just doing this, whether it be um, municipalities, you know, uh, police, fire, rescue, all those different, uh, and even a lot of the um, uh, veterans associations, things like that, all this type of uh, service jackets, they love the reflective and it's a higher end market and therefore there's more profit for you. So how do you grow your business? Maybe go into something that has a little bit higher, higher value to it. And same amount of effort to cut that left chest logo had I put it on a $2 t-shirt versus on a $40 jacket. And I'm talking wholesale costs at this point. Okay, you still with me? I wish I could see a show of hands. Um, real quick, Bob, if somebody were to have a, a vinyl cutter like a Graph Tech, but they don't know how to, you know, let's say use it or get started with it, where would you direct them? If you've already got a cutter and you're still fig trying to figure this thing out and the directions are making you crazy, which I don't read directions because I'm a male, therefore that's I'm required not to. Um, first stop for me is just go to Stalls TV. 
and look, there's a ton of archive videos there per device on how to do this, whether it be out of the box or a very specific, um, whether I'm just trying to change the blade or I'm trying to figure out the blade depth or if I'm trying to fix the cutting strip or what I'm trying to, it's all there. Um, if you get beyond that and you say, you know what, I've watched every video and apparently I'm just a little more remedial than I need to be, you can always call, you can always give us a call and ask for tech support for your device and we're glad to help you out and get you through where you are. Okay. Next, we're getting out of the wearables and getting into the non-wearables. And this is a product called Glaze. And Glaze is kind of a cool, it takes more time describing it than it does to apply it. It is thin, stretchable, translucent. It kind of, it's kind of a chameleon when it comes to colors, with, depending on what it's put on, what the color looks like. It's just a really cool effect. Uh, it's going on, this case, it's just going on a, a, a standard, um, like a cinch bag. So you won't get the effect of some of the hand and stretchability on it, of it. But it's a still kind of a really cool look to get you more of a kind of a tone on tone type of look with this. So we're gonna give that a quick apply here while I've got the six by 10 on there. So adding a, an accessory like a cinch bag, and this doesn't have to be just for schools, although that's a big place for it. Everybody could use a bag like this because everybody's got stuff. And we need to take our stuff from one place to another and they might as well, one, be kind of fashionable with it. Pick it up off the ground. And two, kind of represent and advertise who we're all about. New substrate, gonna give her a quick test. That looks a little bit glossy. I'm gonna break my own rule and go ahead and use a cover sheet all the way through this one. Never know if it's actually gonna give you a little bit of a change the, the sheen on that. No, I think we're still good actually. So just using a simple cover sheet can help protect against that. We have other options for that too, but this is about the cutter, not the press. Now, love the folks that cut these because this one just fits a six by 10. So if I miss at all, I'm in trouble. But it's okay, I have an eight by 10 that I could have used. I'm just too lazy to go with it, but I can make this work. Of course, when you have that much, that little tolerance, being careful with your cover sheet is big. Now I'm trying to recall, is the glaze a hot or cold peel? I believe that it's a cold peel. I would say uh, shift more towards the cold side, Bob. All righty. Had I been home alone and not know these answers, I would simply go to stalls.com and look at it there online, or I would check my catalog, or I'd phone a friend. In this case, I opted to phone a friend. All right, we're done with that view. And how do we take the heat out? We put it against our belly. Or a colder surface would be good. Let's take a look and see what we've got and see if we can come off with this. I don't think we're there. I'm gonna lay it here on the top of this table to let it cool for just a little bit. Meantime, we'll talk about our next, our next uh, victim, if you will. And I, another bag, and this is about as affordable as it gets. This is a, just a simple, it's actually even a natural, so it's unbleached, it's undyed um, in a natural fabric tote bag, cotton, simple. What makes, it, what makes this a great option for you is because you have so very, very little in the investment of the actual tote bag, um, but when you embellish it with a little bit higher end decoration, this, the value of this thing just quadrupled. So now you can get a lot more out of, if I just sold these and resold these, yeah, you're gonna make 50 cents a bag or something like that. But if I embellish them with a personalization, now it's got a lot more value. So. This process that we're going to use here, now this is again, we're talking about substrate or the actual design that's going to make the difference in this. Simple cotton, cotton bag, but now we're going to use some foil. Now foil is, uh, if you haven't used it yet, this is, this is the latest. This is what people are loving. Um, starts with just a, a CAD cut adhesive, 
and this is just an adhesive material. It's the same type of adhesive that's on the back of uh, every heat transfer vinyl, but we're able to cut it with our vinyl cutter. Weed it just like you do a regular vinyl in a mirror image, tack it on the machine for like 10 seconds at a, at a, a lighter pressure, and then we peel it hot, or yeah, peel it hot, and then we're gonna lay a piece of this mylar type of foil over top of that, and only the areas that have the adhesive are going to adhere. So only the purple portion of this mylar comes off, this foil comes off, and so we get a really cool look. And of course, this is kind of twofold that we're doing here. Uh, we're showing you to utilize a, uh, a very affordable, easily purchased bag, um, very, very affordable to, uh, to, to purchase, but also the embellishment itself, not just because it's a very trendy type of foil, but also that it's a monogram. And we here up north, when I said north, like in the uh, mid-Atlantic states, still big, but not as big as it is in, as big as it is in, say, the south, where it is monstrous. Monogramming is everything there. If you don't have a monogram on whatever you've got, then you're missing it. So I'm gonna, this would be actually one where I would, again, if I were, uh, had the time, I probably would switch over to 11 by 15 so it would fill up this whole bag so I make sure that my design is straight. Because sometimes when you just raise up the image area only, it's tough to see whether I have it centered, do I have it straight. So we're gonna hope for the best and you'll, you'll be forgiving. We're going to tack this using a light pressure. 300 degrees for about 10 seconds. And this one will peel hot. Can't see much there. You might see a little bit of a sheen there because it's a very clear type of adhesive. But once we take this foil, and we're gonna keep this nice and smooth and even and lay it over top of it. I've definitely overkilled this, but there's a good reason. I'll show you why here in a minute. I'm gonna cover with a cover sheet just because it was there. And we're gonna increase my pressure a bit because I want this to bury itself in there pretty nicely as far as getting a good adhesion to all the foil. Again, another 10 seconds, this same temperature, same 300 degrees, but we are uh, using a firmer pressure and we will peel this a little bit cooler. It doesn't have to be stone cold, I've found in, yeah, just in my experience, but coming off right away hot is not gonna do what you need. Back over to the table. Keeping Jimmy jumping here, jumping from place to place, but yeah, that's why he gets the big bucks. While that's cooling, we'll go ahead and peel this, this design. Well, you know, let's just get this one first. I like this one better anyway. That didn't take that long. I just want to kind of show you the idea about how that you don't have to have it on there. You know, it has to be stone cold. Foil, a nice high sheen, very soft hand, especially on, on a, an actual wearable fabric. This kind of disappears. Now, I will throw this out there that all of our, uh, almost all of our heat transfer vinyls are rated for 50 plus washings. They're virtually indestructible. They even go way beyond 50, 50 washes. This one is a little more delicate. So this is one you want to take care of. Of course, on a bag, nobody's laundering these too much. This is going to hold up very nicely. But on a shirt, you can expect it to maybe 25 washes. Uh, and even at that, you can increase that by maybe hand washing, flat dry, so you're just really not putting it through the actual wash cycle. So you can uh, increase that, uh, that amount of, of durability that way. One other effect that you can get out of using the foil is after we press the, uh, the, um, the adhesive down, we take the same foil. Now instead of just laying it down flat and getting that smooth effect that we have here, we give it a crinkle. And the reason you give it a little crinkle and then lay it down and apply it is when you press this with all these ridges and ups and downs in here, uh, you're going to get, a, a, it will only take the foil where the foil is. So if there's something that's not hitting the, the adhesive, then it's gonna leave a void. And I've got a little example here of one that was already done. So it gives you a nice distressed look. I think get a zoom in on that. So the same type of foil, see that, that veins in there? That gives you a, a really cool distressed look. It can even be more pronounced than that. You can go over top of the areas that don't have uh, any foil on them and press them with a separate color, a second color, something a little more complimenting. 
gives it a little more three-dimensional type of uh, distress type of look. And if you even went really crazy, if you knew we were going to distress this, you'd tatter the edges of the outside design here too as well. So very trendy. We're, now we're getting into more of a fashion type of thing and not just, you know, how many shirts does your school want. So we're actually almost boutique type of, of sales. All right. Speaking of boutique type sales, um, more monograms, this time using the uh, hologram. Hologram is very, it's got the most reflectability, if that's a word, reflectivity, shiny stuff, uh, that's going to really, really pop. It's, it's very prismatic, and if you haven't used it, you need to at least take a look at it. This is just a simple silver type of color. What I like to use this for in a lot of cases is to make faux rhinestones. Uh, take a three millimeter circle and create your designs out of just those little dots. It sounds very tedious, but it's all cutting. The weeding is one pull because you're taking away the negative around those stones, faux stones. And it's nice for kids because you don't have that harsh, uh, scratchy type of designs. You don't worry about one of them would come off and the kid would swallow it type of situation because it's all CPSI compliant. And it's not scratchy when you're trying to sit on a bunch of rhinestones. You can put it on the pocket of, of jeans, etc. In this case, we're actually going to go on to this really fashionable um, backpack, little girl's backpack, very trendy in colors. And we're going to, well, we're getting our use out of this. I think I'm actually going to switch over to the seven inch round on this one. It'll give me, because this is a round design. I've got a semicircular area here that I'm going to press to. So we'll switch over to a seven inch round. Probably the least used platen in our lineup that I'm, that I'm aware of. But when you need it, you need it. And I need it. Originally, that platen, I believe, was for the ends of an old school roll bag, like a duffel. And it just maximized the space on the, in that circular, so trying to get something square into that round edge was difficult. I love the, th again, threadability on this of this uh, press it allows me to get this all the way in here. And we're going to get this up here. Everything's away from it. I'm going to do a quick test to see whether or not I have the right pressure. We're lucking out here today, kids. Everything seems to be very, very similar in uh, thickness. Align my design. Are closed and press. I'm going to let this one cool just a bit before we peel. I'm coming back to the table and we'll get started with another one because I see I'm starting to get a little bit close on time. I don't want to cheat you out of any of these fabulous designs that we have for you. Speaking of shameless plugs, our producer has promoted himself once again. With, oh, there he fell. We've used a, a neon orange fashion film on this mossy oak. What is this thing? Oh, it is a lunchbox. Got it. Or anything else that you want to that you want to carry thing with you. But yeah, it's a cool lunchbox. Now, what I also will mention to you, uh, when you're sourcing cool things like this, make sure you get them from a, a a supplier that is in the business of blank decorating, or supplying blanks for the decorating industry, because you think, well, how am I going to get that? And I have to have just the right platen. Well, what? Surprise, I've got this cute little flap here with Velcro on it. Now I can apply just to this very easily and do it on just a simple flat press. Uh, I'll probably just use the press, the platen that I have on there right now just because I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll fit. But any, any one of our platens, as long as the design would fit on, would work on this. Had this not been here, it might have been kind of tricky getting inside some of these tighter pockets or inside a zipper or anything like that. And it also gets me away from that that uh, stuff inside, that insulated stuff that actually melts together and sticks so you can never get into there again if you're not careful. So I love the fact that they take care of us because they know what we need, what we want. Again, going to be careful that we don't go upside down. It can be confusing. 
And I see, no, I think we're okay there. That's actually fabric. Sometimes this area here can be a, a, a vinyl, and with the heat, heat on it directly, or a plastic or PVC, usually PVC, that can give you a problem. But I see this is actually a woven 600 denier polyester. But just in case, I'm going to use the uh, cover sheet just to cover it, because it's actually going to push down when the press hits it out of the way. I'm just testing my pressure right now to make sure that we're good. The gods are smiling on us. Everything is a five pressure today. Now I'm going on upside down because it's the way I've got the lunch bag oriented. I'll move that up just a little bit because we do have a circular flatten under here. I'm breaking the rules. I should have a square one there, but hey, I can do it. So in this case, it's a matter of uh, kind of matching the color of the material to the theme of the lunchbox. I mean, it's it's camo for goodness sakes, and so you got to have the blaze orange when you're when you're hunting, etc. Um, but also giving you a, a chance to understand there's more to decorating than t-shirts and polos and jackets. A lot of the sales add-on sales are in the accessories. What's a real key uh, phrase is uh, if they don't see it, they won't buy it. They won't buy what they can't see. So creating some samples like this, finally peeling this, by the way, uh, to give you a look on that one. Uh, but creating some of these images. And there we go. Oh, man, she's falling down. Having them in your shop, whether you have a, whether you have an actual uh, storefront, whether you have just a place where people come in just to you know order their stuff, have a few of these things laying around. You got to inspire them. You know, it, the, the ideal is they come in and say, "Oh, we know exactly what we want, how we want it." What we want. But they're looking for you. They're looking for you to make some suggestions, some things. What is, what's happening? What's everybody else buying? What's cool? What's what's new? Have some things ready. It doesn't take much to get a sample of a couple of these and decorate them and put them in your shop. A cute little overnight bag with dinosaurs on it. Who doesn't like that? Jacoby likes it because that's who's getting this. Now this is actually flock. So again, a velvet type material. Flock is kind of a, uh, I'm going to have to change patterns for this for sure. Uh, but flock is, is, is kind of a retro type material that's been around for a long, long time. And it keeps resurging back and forth as far as popularity. But what I like about flock is it's going to give you a kind of the effect of something that's not just retro, but, but matching. It gives you the effect of, of it's an actual textile. It's a very furry type of uh, velvety type material that's going to kind of blend in with things like fleece, uh, some of your blankets, some of your towels. Um, if you want to get that effect of almost a 3D, it's not super, super high pile, but it's definitely more than just a flat heat transfer vinyl. In terms of these platens, you'll notice that I've got I've taken that six by ten that to date has been portrait. Now we've gone landscape because that has to fit on it. Wouldn't do so well that way. So it's just a matter of a twist. I don't have to change anything. Just put it on that way. And it is also served to get past all of these extra items on this bag. It's going to be right up there. Let's give it a test and see. This type of material is probably the most forgiving we've got. Nice, heavy, 600 denier polyester. Gives you a textured feel to start with. So had this been like a very thin vinyl, it would actually take on the texture of that uh, bag itself. Go ahead and line this up. Now this is a cold peel. So again, this will be another one of those we'll peel off in a little while. That easy. 
We'll set this off to the side. We talk about our next item. We only had a couple left. Actually, one more to press and one more to show. As that cools, a simple throw pillow cover. Uh, very crafty, very um, country charm type of of a, of a, uh, a homes homespun type of look. That's very very trendy. If you go on Pinterest and Etsy and all these things, you're going to see a ton of these type of things. So you match the font to it. You know, let's let's get a little more creative with the uh, with our fonts. Arial Black is not going to cut it for everything. You're going to have to start investing and in looking into some of these more scripty type of fonts. Uh, is there are particular scripts out there right now that everybody's using, and it's just the coolest thing ever. And this is a nice uh, version of that. Gives you a little bit of a uh, extra swirls and, and curls. Now we're going to check this. We're going to see if this is going to fit on the six by ten. If not, I'm going to have to drop back and punt. We're going to make it. All right. The hardest thing about this, which is not so hard, is getting it lined up to the center of this square because that square is everything. It's going to show up anything that's inconsistent. And I'm struggling here. I think I may just go flat on this. I definitely am going flat on this. Sometimes you don't necessarily have to thread. As I'm looking at this, I thought that this flap was going to be in the way, but I see it's not. So I was working too hard. There's no reason for that because I can just lay this down. You know, we like to thread, th use single layer fabric as much as possible, but why make life difficult on yourself? And what I'm going to do here is make sure that I have the same amount of pink coming down on the back as I do the front. That way then I'm just working with just the heat press platen as I'm lining up my design so I don't have to stand there and just keep staring at that square trying to figure out if I've got it right. Check our pressure. Another five pressure. And hopefully these inspire you as to a lot of the additional items that you could be selling, adding to your, your repertoire. Um, really just, you know, thinking beyond what you know to date. I like that. It's not just, you know, not just trendy. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's the business. It's the nature of this, this industry. So, you know, give them what they want. Find out first of all, find out what they want, and then give them plenty of it. Level hot peel. That's done and ready to go. It was a lot easier than I tried to make it to start with. So home sweet home on the throw pillow, beautiful. One little guy that hit the ground here, excuse me, let's pick it up. One last item was make mention of. I didn't bother doing this one, this was already done, but uh, bows, bows are a big, big deal. Uh, cheer bows and representing you know, fundraising type of things for different organizations. Um, but this was just a very simple bow that was done. Some of this was, was came like this. You can buy these bows this way. Some people make their own bows. Uh, this one we just embellished with a simple little heart down the bottom logo here. This could have been, let's get him over here where we're supposed to be. It's going to be real tough to see. But you can see we added a, a red glitter flake down. There we go. <laughs> a little red glitter flake heart right here to... Uh, uh, to help embellish, just to add to it. There was already existing glitter on the on the bow up here in the pink, which doesn't necessarily, you don't see too too well because of the lighting here. But this kind of adds to that. This could have been personalization. This could have been, uh, you know, adding to the overall uh, design for what you're promoting. I think it's time to peel old Jacoby here now that he's cold. And we're good. And now we've there's embellished uh, your going to grandma's bag or whatever else you need. We love when they go to grandma's. Okay, I am out of stuff to press. I hope that what we've shown and what, we've, what you've heard has helped along the line as far as how to grow your business using the vinyl cutter. Uh, not so much philosophy as much as it was new ideas, more inspiration and reasons why you should be going those directions. So 
Uh, we appreciate your attention, your attendance today. Um, the next event on Stalls TV is next Monday, and it's not the morning show, but it is at 11 o'clock, but it's a virtual trade show, so it's something you want to tune into. I'm, uh, I'm excited to actually watch it myself because I've not been clued into everything that's going on, but I hear it's, it's, it's going to be pretty cool. So tune in next Monday at 11 o'clock for the virtual trade show in lieu of the morning show. And as always, thanks for watching Stalls TV.